From the top? Yeah. <laughs> uh, good morning and welcome to worship. Today we're beginning our, our second in the series on uh, prayer. Two weeks ago we talked about the necessity or the benefits of praying together. And now we're going to talk about why we believe better than we behave. All right, let's go to scripture and I'll be right back with the message. Join me for the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture reading is in Book of James, Chapter 4. The heading is Submit Yourselves to God, verses 1 and 2. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. 
Amen and God bless us all. And also today is Happy Grandparents Day. It is. <laughs> In the Gospel of John, it says, Jesus said, you can do nothing without me. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. How do you feel about that? When Jesus says, you can do nothing without me. The, the little bit of rebellion in me says, well, watch me do something. But, but then Jesus goes on and he says, you know, if you remain in me, what does it, what does it mean for us to remain in Jesus? And what does it mean for for Jesus' words to remain in us. And when that happens, Jesus promises, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. And that's a pretty big promise. And that's a pretty amazing promise. So why do we make it so difficult? Why do we find it so difficult to make priority, make prayer a priority in our lives and in our church life? Why is it so hard to do that? And as we said last week, if it's so foundational to Jesus, if it's so foundational to the apostles and the early church, this, this act of gathering together and praying together, why is it so frail in our church today? It seems a lot of times that in our lives that prayer is more like the spare tire than the, than the steering wheel. Uh, you know, we, we use prayer when we need something, or we, we go to prayer when it's the, the last option. When, when all else is failing, we say we should pray to God. And oftentimes when we pray before a meeting, it's, it's like I said before, a, a, a attack on or a sort of a obligatory thing and not really entered into wholeheartedly. The fact is that we, we believe, what we believe about prayer and the way we behave, we behave are two different things. We believe better than we, than, we, than we behave. And I'm going to give you three reasons why this is. And there's at least three reasons. There's probably many more, but I'll give you three. The first reason is that we, we crowd prayer out with other things in our life. We, we let other things take priority. Now, I'm like anyone. I like to maximize my sleep. When I'm in bed, I like to sleep right up to the very moment when I have to, be, have to get up. And to get up early to pray is, is just not in my routine. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to get up before I have to. And so I get up and usually I'm, I have a schedule. I have to get my son ready for his activities for the day. I have to give rides to people at, to their work and I have to do lots of things. And then my day begins and I have to, I have to uh, go to work and I've got tasks to do. Have, ha tasks to do and I have lunch to eat and I have things to do in the afternoon and I have work to do and I have chores at the house and then before you know it it's the end of the day and I'm exhausted and I want to fall asleep but you know it doesn't take any time it doesn't take very little it takes very little effort from the time when I wake up to the time my feet hits the floor to to bring God into the mix to to be able to say God be with me this day. And it, and it takes very little time from the time my, my food hits the table till it hits my lips that I can give God thanks and praise for, for what I have. And, and it takes very little effort to lay down and before I fall asleep to reflect on the day and, and give it all to God and, and let God take my worries away. Our biblical example of this is Martha. Martha lived with Mary and their brother and Jesus came to their house and they were, they were having a gathering and Mary was at Jesus' feet and Martha was busy. She was cooking and she was preparing and she was doing all the things to be a good host for Jesus. And in the midst of it, the scripture uh, describes the moment when Martha came to Jesus to complain about Mary because Mary wasn't helping. Mary wasn't doing the, all the work that, that Martha was doing. And Jesus was like, Martha, Martha, Mary chose the better thing and it won't be taken away from her. You see, Jesus came to Martha's house and she was missing out on it. Can you imagine if we had the ability to go back in time and to meet Jesus in the flesh, meet Jesus in person, and we would want to do anything we could. We would, we would do any task that he asked, but 
wouldn't it be better to be in Jesus' presence rather than being distracted by all the other things that life brings at us? And that's what we do. We, we let the, our life distract us from being in the presence of Jesus. And that's the better thing. That's what Jesus is calling us to. Jesus wants this intimate relationship. God wants us to come to him through Jesus and give him all of our victories and all of our pain and all of our sorrows and all of our joys because God is so in love with us. And we return that love by being distracted and by crowding out our time with him. So that's the first reason we crowd things out. We crowd prayer out. And the second thing is that we, we often think that we can handle things on our own through our own strength, our own intellect, our own history, our own whatever we've got. We think we've got this. We think that we can do this on our own. Like our scripture for today said in James, you don't have because you haven't asked. You don't have what you need. You don't have what you want because you haven't asked God for it. God is ready and able and eager and willing to bless us. But we tend to rest on our own strength and our own will and our own talents to, to get, the, get the thing done. If we would just turn to God, if we would just like get ourselves focused on, on, on God in our lives, we would, we would find our path would, would, would come so much, become so much clearer. And in a lot of times things, we would be blessed in such a, a richer way than if we hadn't. And so we don't ask. And so we, we scheme and we fight and we quarrel and we, we strive and we do all these things. And meanwhile, God is just waiting to be asked. So the first reason is that we crowd prayer out with our own schedule. The second reason was that we, we uh, try to handle things on our own. The third reason, the th third of three, is that uh, we don't see prayer as part of our relationship to God. We don't see prayer as relational. I mean, what if we talk to God the way we talk to those that we love? What if we talk to our spouse the way we talk to God? You know, come, you know, before God with a sort of a laundry list or a, a grocery list uh, tone. Oh, wife, you know, we, you know, I adore you. You are, you're great. I confess that I have not been a good husband. Uh, thank you for all that you do. And now here's what I want from you. And that's the only time we talk to our spouse. And if that's the way we ha handled our personal relationships, those relationships would not last very long. My wife would tell me to scram if I talked to her like that. No, the, our relationship with those that we love, we're, we're interested in what they have to say. We're interested in spending time with them. And that's what God wants from us. God is interested in blessing us. And we should be interested in hearing God's voice. We, we should be interested in knowing what God wants and being in this relationship with God and going through life in a more beautiful way. When I was staying in Evanston, Illinois for a few weeks for school, uh, I went out, I had this desire to go and, and be with God in, in prayer. And so I went out uh, out by the lake shore. See, Evanston is a city that is on Lake Michigan on the, on the west side. And they, the, the city placed these huge uh, concrete blocks along the lake shore, pr presumably to stop erosion. And, and they're massive, you know, six, eight feet cubes, uh, maybe even bigger than that. So I went out there to pray and I climbed out on these, on these big uh, cement or concrete blocks and I was sitting there just enjoying the serenity of Lake Michigan. And I was praying to God. I was like praying, you know, God, give me direction. Give me guidance. Give me inspiration. Lord God, I love you. I was, you know, I was praying. I was trying to connect with God. And I just finally said, God, if you're here, just can you just let me know? And in that moment, a, a, some rogue wave hit one of those blocks and soaked me. It splashed me. You know, it wasn't happening before or after that. And in that moment, I, I said, God, you are present. Now, you could say that it was a coincidence, and it, and it may have been. But it, even if it was a coincidence, I'm sure God was there with me laughing at, at that wonderful coincidence. And the fact that I was soaked and I... And I took it as a, a as a reminder of my baptism, of you know, because it woke me up and it and it 
enlivened me and, and it made me filled with joy. So, I mean, if, if I felt all those good things, how could God have not been present during all of that? I mean, generally speaking, if we get splashed unwillingly or unknowingly, we are generally uncomfortable or upset. But I wasn't. I thought it was wonderful. You see, God is our, our beloved. God is the one who loves us unconditionally. We should be returning that to him. But we act like those, those, you know, those bugs that, that uh, walk on the surface of the water. They, they skim across the, the surface and they never really break the surface. They never d- d- uh, dive deep. You know, and that's, and that's what God invites us to. God wants us to take that deep dive with him. God wants that, that loving relationship with us. He loves us so much, so much that he, he sent Jesus and Jesus died for us. And so God longs to bless us. God longs to be with us. God longs to, to, to be in relationship with us. And so why would we not engage in a deep, meaningful prayer with our God, because our God is there. Our God is waiting for this. Like it says in Jeremiah 29, 13, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. That's that deep dive. If you look for me, God says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. That's a promise. Until we, until you make your communion, your relationship with God, something that you invest your time and your stillness and your, your energy into, you will never have that deep relationship with God. It's a relationship and you need to pour yourself wholeheartedly into finding God and God will be there with you. See, I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to see all those things that God wanted to bless us with. We're going to see this, this multitude of, of things that we could have had had we not crowded God out had we not gone our own way and and God said I just long to give you these things I just long to bless you but but you kept on being distracted and you kept on doing your own thing see our Lord stands eager and willing to be with those who will wait in prayer for him and so uh, I'm calling us to 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 be a, a prayerful people I'm calling us to whatever we're facing, whatever challenges that's before us, whatever decisions we have to make, that we're going to be okay because God is, is eager to bless us. Because anything is possible with God, and God is eager to bless those who seek him. All right, friends, would you pray with me? Oh, my Jesus, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, I love you. You are my God. We often, Lord, crowd you out. We often, Lord, rely on our own strength and our own will and our own education and our own strengths. But Lord God, all those things, they're just, they have limits. Lord God, we, we open ourselves up to, to your love and to your relationship. And we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests soft succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it.
hands. Want of food, want of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands. We are trusting in the Lord and according to God's word. We will understand it better by By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God have gathered home, we'll tell the story how we've overcome, for we'll understand it better by and by. Trial dark on every hand that we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land but he guides us with his eye and we'll follow till we die for we'll understand it better by and by by and by When the saints of God have gathered home, we'll tell the story how we overcome, for we'll understand it better. are made to bleed for a thoughtless word or deed and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best we'll understand it better by and by by and by when the morning comes when the saints of God are Tell the story of how we overcome, for we'll understand it better by. Hi, friends. <clears throat> Thank you so much for being here. Um, I look forward to ne the next couple weeks. We're going to talk about the elements of a very powerful prayer, to how to have a, a prayer, powerful prayer meeting. And I pray, Lord, that, that we take these messages, that we take these truths about God, and we let them transform our life. All right, friends, go in peace, and may the God of peace be with you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.